Hello everyone, we will be discussing about CMDB data manager in today's video and if you have been long enough in service now, you know this is a replacement of data certification. So there was a module called data certification which has been decommissioned by ServiceNow and now it has been replaced by CMDB data manager couple of years ago. So we will go ahead and take a look into why we need data manager and how to implement that in ServiceNow. Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Hardit Singh and if you are liking my content, please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to hit that like button. So first of all, what is CMDB Data Manager? It is a policy driven framework for bulk management of CI lifecycle operations such as deletion, archival or attestation. So if you have been working with CMDB, you know there is loads of data and in some cases it could be millions of records and then you need something automated to delete them or maybe to archive them and maybe to attest them that they have the correct data or not. So based on conditions, you can do all of these. So for example, if an EC2 server of AWS has not been discovered in last one month and there is no owner of that, you can go ahead and delete that because most probably it does not exist anymore. Next is policy types. Now in this policy types, you can go ahead and do all these things like archival so you can write a policy for archiving the CMDB data for some conditions. Similarly for deletion, retire, attestation, certification or delete CMDB related entry. In this video, we will be taking an example of certification, how you can certify a data is correct or not. Here are some more examples of CMDB data manager where you can use them in the retire we can give a condition retire all the Unix servers without owners that were created more than a year ago. So this would be retire policy type. Next example of archiving could be archive all Solaris servers in San Diego data center that haven't been updated in last six months. So you can go ahead and archive those CMDB records. Next example is deletion. So delete all EC2 servers that haven't been discovered in the past week. So this would be delete type of policy. Now in our example, we will create a policy that would certify all the Unix servers that have empty description. So a very basic use case that we want to certify that there are no Unix servers in my CMDB data that have empty description so that we have relevant description in the servers for the admin team to monitor those and efficiently manage. Now let's go to ServiceNow and see how can we create a policy. I am in my ServiceNow instance and now to go to CMDB data manager, there is no direct way to go from here. So you would have to actually go to workspaces and click on CMDB workspace. As soon as you click on this, a new workspace is opened. I will make some more space here. And then if you scroll down, click on data manager. One more thing, if you are not able to see this option, please go ahead and activate this plugin in your personal developer instance. The name of the plugin you would find as CMDB data manager. Now you would see some options on the left hand side so this is data manager overview. This is kind of a dashboard where you can see everything. You can manage or create new policies or if there are any tasks created from those policies, which we will see, you can see all of them here. Next is policies. Now the existing policies in your organization or in your service now system are appearing here. So if you see, I have created one test policy. And then you can see the draft policies which have not been published yet or deactivated policies or policies failing evaluation. Next we have subflows. So you can attach subflows to your policies as well. What are subflows? So I have an entire 
playlist of flow designer where I have explained the concepts of flow designer, the subflows, actions and everything. The link is on the top right corner and in the description as well. I would highly recommend you learning the flow designers as well even if you are a developer or not a developer that is a low code no code platform of service now please go ahead and learn that as well coming back to cmdb data manager when a policy is implemented for a certain type of asset or a ci then you can run the subflow for example if you see the archiving so this might have been written for the cis who are passing the policy of being archived and this subflow would run eventually for them there could be some approvals in it or maybe some tasks in it or so on so if you want to archive a ci you can attach a subflow to that so that it goes through approvals and doesn't get retired directly excluded records are those which you don't want to include in any of the policies they wouldn't appear on any of those policies then we have analytics for reporting right now we don't have any task but when you start using data manager it will eventually come up and lastly we have the settings so here you can actually go and add the settings for the life cycle rules of these CIs so if I take you into one of them here you have to select the business app name and the status is retired so whenever the status is changed to retired for business application service now will consider this as a retired ci similarly there are other options like for hardware this would be the retired criteria for cmdb ci service this is the retired criteria and so on so you have the retirement definitions here you have other options as well maybe we will leave it for a separate video but you can go and configure multiple things in cmdb data manager now let's go ahead and create a new policy for that i went into data manager overview i will click on create new policy and if you remember our use case we have to create a policy for the unix servers which don't have a description so unix servers empty description so this is the name of the policy then you can put something in the description as well and then you go ahead and select from any of the policy types which we had discussed so right now we just have to go and certify whether they have the correct data or not i will click on certification then if you want to put any work notes when those tasks are generated you can do it from here i'll just paste this description here and i will click on continue now we have to put the filter one important thing to note is CMDB data manager certification attestation or retirement this would happen only for the tables which are inherited from CMDB CI table so you cannot go and do it on a custom table which has not been inherited from the base table or you cannot do it on any random table like incident problem or change you can do it only on the tables which are inherited by cmdb ci table now let's go ahead and put some conditions here so i will just put class class is unix servers and then i will put another condition description is empty okay now i will check the records how many records are matching this condition so there are six records which are matching this condition so i will continue on this and then it will ask me which particular assignment group this certification task should be assigned to now you can go ahead and assign it to some user field which is on the unix server table or a user group field or to some specific user or to some specific user group as well for the demo purposes we will assign it to some specific user group but again you can choose it to be dynamic based on the fields on the table and I will assign it to the hardware team I will click on continue and now if it asks you which particular fields should be displayed 
when they are certifying the data. Maybe we will select name as a tag. So these fields are used by the assignee to see or distinguish those servers. So choose these fields wisely so that they can identify which are these servers. Maybe we can go ahead and choose one or two more fields like operating system version or the operational status or maybe most recent discovery and then maybe the location. As of now for testing purpose we will keep only these fields and then which all fields you want to certify. This is the important part. So I want to certify the description field whether those empty descriptions are fine or you want to actually put in some description. Allow empty field values. Okay. So this is the checkbox where when the person or the assignee who has been assigned the tickets to resolve this can they enter the empty values or leave them empty or they have to mandatorily put in some value. So if I allow that empty value so they can go ahead and certify the data without any values as well. If I uncheck this they will have to mandatorily put some data in the description. So I will just allow the empty field values as of now. Then days to complete in how many days they should complete their tasks and then any instructions for them. I will click on continue. And now we can schedule this policy to run daily, weekly, monthly, periodically, once or on demand. So it's up to you how many times you want to run this policy. For this again demo purposes, we will make it on demand. But usually what I have seen in the organizations, it is usually monthly. So I will click on on demand as of now. And then I will click on continue. And I will review this policy and publish it. Now as soon as I publish this, it would appear under publish policies. And if you would see, this is the second policy which we just created. Now this is an ad hoc policy or on demand policy. So you have to run this policy manually. In service now CMDB data manager, I did not find a way to directly do that. But I found a table from where you can schedule this. So the table name is CMDB policy schedule job. There is no UI as of now by service now. I don't know if it would be an enhancement or not. But as of now you have to go to this particular table and create a job to run this policy. So I will type here CMDB underscore policy underscore scheduled underscore job dot list. And you would see this policy is automatically appearing here. If I go into this and here you can click on execute now to run this policy ad hoc. So I will click on execute now and this policy has ran now. Now this policy would be assigned to some users who are part of that hardware group. So I am in the groups table and I will go to the hardware table and I will see who is the user. Choose a user maybe ITIL user and impersonate as that user. So I will go here and impersonate as ITIL user and then we will go to the CMDB workspace. So I will click on these three dots and I will click on CMDB workspace and I will click on open tasks. Now you would be seeing a one task is assigned to the hardware team. So I will click on this and you would see the details of this ticket here. Now you can actually review the records to certify or reassign this ticket to someone or assign this ticket to yourself. So I will assign it to me. That means the ITIL user and you would now see this is assigned to the ITIL user and there are total six records to certify and this is the policy name. The policy type is certification. This is the short description and allow empty field is yes. Now let's go ahead and review records to certify. So I will click on this. And here I will get the list of all six records. And you would see these are the fields which we had selected. 
to show as display fields. Again, you would want to put more details in this so that the user know which particular record we are talking about. And in the last, you would see the description is empty. Now I can go ahead and certify one by one or I can actually certify all the records together. So if I select all of them and then I will click on certify, it will certify all the records. So let's do this. And all the records have been now certified and I will submit. And now you see the task has been submitted successfully and there are no more tasks which are pending for this user. So this is how you would certify the data and you can do it similarly for the retirement of the CMDB data archival or attestation as well. If you want me to create a dedicated video for each of the use case, please let me know in the comments and I will be happy to go ahead and do that. I hope this video was helpful to you and you learned something new in service now. And please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button.